this video covers the environmental pollution in that the primary air pollutants the primary air pollutants uh, like carbon monoxide oxides of nitrogen oxides of sulfur particulate matter hydrocarbon and particularly this video covers uh, the two uh, primary air pollutants uh, their uh, source ill effects and the controlling methods of hydrocarbons and particulate matter let us discuss the first one the hydrocarbon the hydrocarbons are composed of only hydrogen and carbon so if you write the hydrocarbon the components usually we'll write ch4 c2h6 that means it contains only carbon and hydrogen so naturally these hydrocarbons are formed by the anaerobic decomposition of organic matter uh, and this is processed or produced by the bacteria anaerobic bacteria that is the bio degradation the produced by the bacteria through anaerobic decomposition of organic matter so any uh, the hydrocarbons or the uh, components organic matter which contains carbon hydrogen and oxygen on decomposition forming carbon dioxide and methane methane is nothing but a hydrocarbon okay this is a natural source or a natural uh, natural uh, sources of hydrocarbon the other than this the burning of wood coal oil they also uh, produce hydrocarbons the burning of wood wood mainly contains carbon and uh, even it contains a hydrogen which on proper burning in the presence of oxygen so it produces carbon dioxide and even some amount of the gaseous components or uh, the hydrocarbons and even in the laboratory we use a lot of solvents which is an organic solvents on slow evaporation or the evaporation so these uh, hydrocarbon components are moved into the uh, atmosphere so by the solvent evaporation in the laboratory it causes or it is the main source of uh, hydrocarbons and the uh, last one the source of hydrocarbon is the incomplete combustion of fuel used in automobiles the automobiles normally we use the petrol or diesel sometimes an incomplete combustion that take place as as a result the hydrocarbons are produced so the four major source of hydrocarbons that is by anaerobic decomposition of organic matter burning of wood coal and oil solvent evaporation in the laboratory and incomplete combustion of fuel used in laboratory so used in the automobiles then what are the ill effect observed by this hydrocarbon so hydrocarbons uh, form it uh, enter into the atmosphere and the it pollutes the atmospheric air so when this air inhale or it is taken by the uh, uh, human beings so hydrocarbons that causes or it is a carcinogenic in nature so any substance that has the uh, potential to cause cancer in the living tissues are called it as a carcinogenic so this hydrocarbon can able to form a cancer or can able to uh, 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 results in the uh, cancer so hydrocarbons are carcinogenic in nature and they cause cancer this is a main ill effects observed in the hydrocarbons and what we observed here the pale yellow color of leaves of the uh, tree uh, 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 tree or a plant that is the harm the plants even it harm the plants by causing aging it causes aging of the uh, plants aging and breakdown of tissues and shedding of leaves and flowers so as a, a high percentage of hydrocarbon if it is released to the atmosphere it e even it causes uh, 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 some um, effects to plants that plants causing ages uh, aging breakdown of tissues and even the shedding of leaves and flowers and even the hydrocarbon gets oxidized in the atmosphere by the chemical or photochemical reaction results in the formation of carbon dioxide again the carbon dioxide is called is a health hazard in nature the hydrocarbons also leads to the formation of photochemical song smog as the atmosphere contains oxides of nitrogen and volatile organic components they can form a secondary air pollutants like a pan 
that is a peroxy acetyl nitrate so hydrocarbons and oxides of nitrogen are the major contributions to air pollution so these hydrocarbons and oxides of nitrogen are both um, the source of these is a uh, automobiles even it uh, source so automobiles exhaust contains both hydrocarbon and even the oxides of nitrogen they react to produce peroxy acyl nitrates and even the ozone okay so that can be observed here we can explain here the ozone formation as well as carbon monoxide oxides of nitrogen and volatile organic compounds the volatile organic compounds means it contains the hydrocarbons they can they usually forms a o3 and the pan so these are the main ill effect observed uh, in the uh, uh, utilization of hydrocarbons okay then how we control this hydrocarbon the hydrocarbons are controlled by the process such as incinerations adsorption absorptions etc so by using some catalyst we can able to absorb the uh, hydrocarbons so by absorbing hydrocarbons we can uh, introduce Uh, the exhaust which is free from uh, hydrocarbons or by the incineration process or by the adsorption process usually the adsorption is carried out over the surface of activated carbon and the third method of controlling is by lowering the temperature by using cold water by sprinkling over the this uh, hydrocarbons uh, over the hydrocarbons the cold water the hydrocarbons can be condensed and separated from the few gases so as a result we can minimize the formation of hydrocarbons in the even uh, during combustion process and the condensing hydrocarbons by spraying water just by spraying water over the uh, pollutants or air so we can able to control the hydrocarbons so this is about the sources ill effect and the controlling methods of hydrocarbon let us move to the next one uh, primary air pollutant that is a particulate matter what is this particulate matter it is a minute solid particles or a liquid droplets in the air the particulate matters are the minute solid particles solid particles or a liquid droplets in air particulates usually ranges uh, in size from the diameter of 0.0002 microns to 500 microns that is a very very small a uh, minute particles uh, which enter into the atmosphere and causes a health hazarding it is a health hazarding component mainly leads to uh, respiratory problems so even the natural sources are dust storms forest fires see here uh, what you observed in the picture very small or the small particulate these are the particulate matter how this is generated so maybe by the natural sources that is maybe from dust storms forest fires or uh, even the dust movements as a result a small or the uh, particulate matters are produced then even the particulate matters like a dust particles they form the main source of dust are mining quarries furnaces power houses house cleaning dust wood diesel engine see here in the industry the uh, it emits some amount of air polluting components that may contain such as particles even the mining so what we observed here is a mining even in the quarries or housing house diesel engine and even even you, if you observe uh, in the household it formed by the incomplete combustion of fuel smoke is another source of uh, particulate matter dust is a main source and even the smoke it is formed by the incomplete combustion of fuel and smog it is just the combination of smoke and fog in the suspended droplet form it is the, the uh, smog a mixture of smoke and fog in suspended mm. droplet forms so this is a major issue observed in the north india because here the crop wheat crops after uh, cropping so the wheat plants is burnt so as a result it produces large quantity of smoke during cold season so this combines these particles are combined with in the uh, of fog so results are droplets which contains a high percentage of uh, smoke particles okay it is a particulate matter and even the other particulate matter is a asbestos this is used in the industry to increase the mechanical strength of material and heat resistance of material asbestos even for roofing it is used it is a is dust particles 
and uh, uh, with a very low uh, uh, minute size. Okay, these are the major sources of particulate matter: dust, smoke, smog, asbestos. Now, what are the ill effects observed by this? The major uh, effect caused by a particulate matter is a respiratory problems. So, as uh, atmospheric dust causes allergic and uh, respiratory diseases. You know the particulate matter with the size ranging from 2.5 to 10 micron can easily inhale. So, hair, uh, human hair is around 50 to 70 microns in diameter. Whereas the sand or the fine bleached sand is 90 micron in the diameter, a little more than that. So that much, that is a very uh, thin or the dust particles inhale and it can enter to the respiratory. Com that is a combustion of particles, even organic materials, their uh, size is around 2.5 micron. That means these particles can easily inhale. As a result, it causes allergic or respiratory, even the pollen. The pollen now uh, the size is very it is less than 10 micron as a result it, when we inhale it causes allergic or respiratory diseases it can damage the lung tissues because it is it can once it adhered on the because it's a mucous membrane so it adhered on these uh, on the lung uh, lung so it can even causes some breathing problems in the human bodies and yeah, the particulate like uh, uh, originated bra containing acid and aldehydes mainly causes eye, nose and throat irritations. So these are the major ill effects that is largely we consider it causes a respiratory problems. So breathing problems, allergy, running nose. So these are the main or the nose and uh, throat irritation. These are the major effect observed uh, by the particulate matters. And how it, how it can be controlled? There are many methods used to control the particulate matters. A, a few are centrifugal cyclones method, electrostatic precipitator method, gravity separation method, wet scrubber method, a fabric filter method. So I'll take one by one. What is this? Centrifugal cyclones. Uh, cyclones. This device is removing particulate range in the size of 10 to 100 microns. It causes uh, it uses centrifugal force to separate dust particle from the gas stream. See, in the diagram you can observe here, uh, dust particles uh, are introduced in a particular inlet and uh, here it is dust particles are introduced and due to centrifuge, the continuous movement of this uh, furnace, so the, uh, so the dust particles are settled at the bottom and can be removed from the respective outlet and put the air which is uh, at the top layer which uh, what we collect or it is uh, entered to the atmosphere it is free from uh, the dust particles so even it can be observed in this figure also here the dust particles are removed and here what we shown it is a centrifugal force that is continuous movement of the uh, furnace or the chamber is observed so as a result the movement as a result, the denser particle or the dust particles, they separate at the bottom and what the water or the air which is free from these dust particles are moved up from the uh, top outlet. And the next method is the electrostatic precipitator. The particles from the particulates are removed by the use of electrode to attract uh, the particulate matters. The method what we called it as an electrostatic precipitator. The working principle in the electrostatic precipitator is a very simple. It consists of two electrodes, uh, the positive and the negative electrodes. The negative electrodes are in the form of wire mesh and the positive electrodes are in the form of plates that you can observe here. The two plates, this is a positive electrode, these two, and this is a wire mesh, the negative electrodes. And these electrodes are vertically placed in the alternatively like this in this chamber you can observe in this way so placed uh, each other so what is the principle with the negative electrodes uh, and usually it is connected to the terminals and to when we pass a very high dc voltage is introduced the ionize the medium between the negative and the positive electrode a certain distance maintained between the positive and the negative electrode and the dc source resulting in high voltage gradient the uh, there might be uh, like uh, the uh, here, uh, particularly the, uh, it is an enclosed system, 
by using metallic container it consists of inlet uh, for flue gases and the outlet for filled uh, filtered gases uh, thereby a plenty of uh, free electrons as a when you supply electric and free electrons uh, as the electrodes are ionized which interact with the dust particles this is a negative electrodes so electrons are formed when you when you flow the gas that time this negative electrodes uh, attract the flu attracts uh, which interact with the dust particle of the gas making the uh, the dust particle into a negatively charged and these negatively charged the dust particles usually move towards the positive electrodes and uh, they are fall off due to the gravitational forces so now the flue gas is free from the dust particle is then it's flow through the electrostatic precipitator and are discharged to the uh, outlet as a clean gas so here uh, the separation take place the dust particle takes negative charge because of generation of electrons and uh, they migrate towards the oppositely charged plates that is naturally positive plates and what the air pass through this uh, porous membrane negative membrane so it is free from uh, all dust particles this method called it as a electrostatic precipitator method then is a gravity separation method here the air is allowed to flow through the dust settling tank slowly in one direction which removes the particles from the uh, dry air. Here raw gases are passed here as a result of uh, 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 movement the dust particles uh, uh, air, air is uh, passed from the top of the uh, chamber. So the dust particles are settled at the bottom and the because of uh, dry air. So, because the dust particles usually it contains, it is the best one. So, the uh, little higher weight, heavy one. So, uh, when you pass the hot air, so the moisture content is removed and the air which is free from the dust uh, particles are moved off. So, you can observe here, here the air is uh, passed. So, the allowed to pass through a uh, dust settling uh, tank slowly in one direction which removes the particles from the dry air. So here what we collect is a dust particles and where the uh, here we collect it's a clean air. So it is used to remove a uh, particle with a size greater than 50 micron. Velocity of flue gas reduced in large chamber. So the particles that are under gravitational force. In all methods we mainly observe the gravitational force. The next thing is a wet scrubber method. That is applying a liquid spray on the gas molecule to absorb dust from the air here. The dry gas dirty gas is passed here at the same time here the liquid air is uh, sorry liquid uh, is introduced so this the uh, dirty gas they absorbs the liquid then it is moved with a very high velocity where the liquid with the uh, dirty particles they settle at the bottom the gases which is free from the uh, uh, particulate matter is moved off uh, it is uh, removed from the respective outlet. Then the last method what we considered is a called it as a fabric filtration method. Here collect the dust by passing flue gases through a fabric through uh, that act as a filter. Here the raw gases is filtered. Uh, sorry, the raw gases are introduced. Here we use some fabric filters. So when you pass a raw gases. So under a compressed air or a mechanical shaking, as a result, they contain the dust particle. The dust particles are absorbed by the uh, fabric filters and what the gas we collect, it is free from the uh, particulate matter. So this method, what we call it as a fabric filter method, the collect dust by passing flue gases through a fabric that act as a filter. So uh, this is about uh, the sources, ill effect and the controlling methods of particulate matter. Thank you.